Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of the Pure Connect Communities Q&A show, the show where we answer your pressing questions from the Genesis Online community. My name is Matt Lawson. I am your online community manager. And today we have a familiar face returning. You may recognize our expert today, um, Greg Cole, from the AMA that we did on reporting and analytics. Well, wouldn't you know it? He's back to give us a really cool preview of the new CX Insights tool that'll be coming on. That's right. You're going to get to see some of the dashboards that you can build and how they work. Um, more importantly, he's going to answer the pressing question, when and how will Marquee be replaced? So if you're interested in that, definitely stay around for the conversation because Greg is about to show you a brand new toy that you can start playing with just in time for Christmas. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's welcome Greg to the show. Greg, how are you? Hey, Matt. Doing well. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, doing well. Yeah. Last time we spoke, I think it was in preparation for the uh, reporting analytics AMA that we did, right? Yes, it was. Very cool. Well, I'm glad we didn't scare you off. And I know there are some customers that will love to see you back. Um, so, Greg, it's your first time on this show, uh, as far as I can remember. And... Um, what we do whenever we have a new guest on is we have a collection here of random icebreakers submitted by our customers. Oh, fun. Yes. I think we, we may have answered one of these before, but anyway, uh, I pick one randomly and I have it right here. And okay. the icebreaker for today comes from Ray. And Ray wanted to know, what are your favorite words of wisdom? I don't know. Don't touch a, touch a hot surface. <laughs> uh, I've been saying that a lot lately to these <laughs> two little boys that I have. Um, no, uh, I don't. I think back honestly in, in high school for some reason I, I uh, a quote that I thought of or somebody said, but um, keep life simple. You make fewer mistakes that way. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. But you know, do you really want to? I mean, I don't know if I live by that so much or if I really believe in that anymore. Uh, because if you don't make mistakes, you don't grow. Hey, there's my words of wisdom. Oh. I think, I think we've given people watching a lot to think about. Um, and from what I understand, you have something else that you want to tease their brains with. You, want to, you came here to show, um, what is this? Is this some uh, new functionality that exists within CX Insights? Or what exactly are you doing? No, it's actually CX Insights. It's the initial release. Uh, oh, cool. We have 11 real-time dashboards um, that um, are that show uh, supervisory statistics on work groups and agents. Awesome. Well, hey, let's hop in. I can't wait to see it. Sure. So I'm going to, I have it, uh, the main screen here, and I'm going to click uh, log in using my Windows uh, credentials. And it's uh, contacting the server, which is the identity provider, uh, to get my credentials to make sure it knows who I am and all the permissions and everything that I have, uh, everything that I can do. Uh, and you can see it start loading up here, and we have a list in the upper left-hand corner of all the 11 dashboards that are available. We've got agent details, agent overview, agent overview grid, agent status, and then seven uh, work groups, uh, work group dashboards. So um, by default, it'll select the agent details, but if you notice, there's really nothing being displayed here. So what I'll do is go to the upper right-hand corner, uh, select a work group, and um, so I'm going to select billing, and then once I select a work group, it'll list all of the agents in that work group. So I'm going to go down and select Kenneth Hall. And we see Kenneth uh, has a bunch of uh, statistics showing specifically about him spanning all of the selected intervals. In the lower right-hand corner, you can select the intervals that you want to see. So we have, the, if you're using periods or shifts, um, either or, and let's see what we have data for. So we have, um, let's use shifts. So we look at the current shift, and compare it to the previous shift. So now what I'm looking at is side-by-side um, -side comparison of the current shift right now for Kenneth Hall um, and however long your shifts are uh, for the interval for the periods that are typically 30 minutes. Um, but this agent here, um, you can see what he did last shift um, and what he's doing this shift. We've got entered, number of answered calls, non-ACD calls that this person took, um, number of completed calls, how many did he put on hold, um, and all these different things, all the statistics. And at the bottom, we see a, uh, a little grid that shows those uh, kind of uh, side by side 
in, in a little grid fashion. And if you want to, you can actually maximize any one of those individual visualizations. So if you just wanted to show this on a screen, and it makes more sense maybe for some of the other dashboards where you're showing either multiple work groups or multiple agents, but just uh, for demonstration, um, you, can, you can maximize those. So that's the agent details. I'm gonna skip down to uh, one that shows some data about multiple agents. Uh, we'll look at the agent status. And the agent status will give you the current status information of any agents that you have selected. So you can see the screen's a little bit more busy, uh, but similarly to the last one in the upper right hand corner, I select the work groups that I care about. Right now I have them all selected. And then all of the agents here, there's a long list of agents here. And then um, it will show you by work group what the current status, what the distribution of, of status is. So we can see that in the customer experience work group, right now there's 11 members at lunch. And same for um, the G Care parking and member services has 13, but then who's available? You know, this um, would be a good statistic to, to know to be able to see how many agents are available in each of these work groups because maybe you want to move some people around, for instance. Genesis Insurance only has one available, but the sales specialist work group has 24 available. Um, how many agents are gone home? How many are on a break? And then uh, just as another visualization, we have a pie chart showing that same information. And cool. if you, yeah, so if you wanna um, just focus in or narrow in on you know one or two work groups, you can mm -hmm. do that as well. Let's just say that you really wanna get an idea of what's going on with a customer experience work group. This gives you some detail. Uh, their status and down here we see some the the breakdown of for this uh, the work group customer experience here let's let's actually make this one full screen here so now we're seeing uh, for the customer experience work group all the agents and what the different statuses that they're in so you can get uh, at a glance you can see all the different statuses of your agents and how long they've been in those statuses that's really awesome. Um, could you go back to the uh, page that had the pie chart on it, please? Right here? Yeah, go back one more, please. Uh, to where, yeah, all the breakdowns were. Uh, you, are you talking there. about the agent details? Uh, no, it was this one where you had the different groups and you could see like how many from each group were at lunch or available. Yeah, yeah, so this, this pie chart. Cool. So one of the things I was wondering is um, you had one view where at lunch you could see like the WFO and the customer experience groups and all of that. Mm -hmm. I was curious because how you have the, um, the bars set up, they're color coordinated based on status. Can mm -hmm. you switch that so that the bars are color coordinated based on teams? Um, well, let's see if we, if we select, so, so you're saying, um, we select a couple of other work groups. Yeah, they're grouped. Uh, no, that's actually hard coded into this actual dashboard. But okay. when we have designer capability available, anyone will be able to either create their own dashboard from scratch or take one that we've built and modified it to their own needs. So if somebody wanted to switch that color coding, they'd be able to do that very easily. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. So there, so there's a, a couple, just a couple of the agent uh, dashboards. I'm gonna switch now and show the work group overview. It's similar to the agent uh, details dashboard. Um, it allows you to select a single work group. So I'm gonna select uh, customer experience here. <clears throat> and well, let's take a look at another one. Try to find a good one. That's a little bit better. Uh, customer support. And you can see um, this, again, is the detail of this work group. So some of the information we saw on that last dashboard with multiple work groups, now we're seeing the specific details for this work group, customer support, and they have uh, 14 agents available. Let's see, we'll select some of the uh, away statuses. Uh, so now we have, you can see that uh, we have 10 gone home and 14 available. And uh, you can select any of these statuses that you want. And this is a live simulation we have running in our sim domain. So um, I personally don't have a lot of control over the data, but I think you can still get an idea of what it does. Um, and in this agent availability uh, bar chart, we've got for the customer support work group, how many total agents are there? How many are logged in? How many are logged in and activated? Um, uh, available for ACD, um, available 
and not available. So again, this, this gives you a distribution of not just their status, but their availability and, and their availability for taking interactions. And, and this is a good one because if you look down here at the next one, the interaction details bar chart, it shows you how many calls are currently connected and how many are waiting. So if you start seeing this purple line go up and get higher um, and you have a lot of people at a launch or on a break, you can use this. It gives you the insight into what's going on with your root group so you can start calling people back off break if the, if the call numbers get pretty high. So um, very, very useful dashboard to have for a supervisor. And then, awesome. yeah, and then we've got some longest time details here. And then at the bottom, again, we have really just a summary. If you just want to look at all those numbers, and, and this might be something that you throw up on a, a wall board or a, you know, really we support a monitor. It's a web application. So as long as you have a monitor that's large enough for your work group to see it, um, they, could, they could see this. You know, theoretically, you could give access to all of your agents if you wanted to, and if they have access to see this data. Um, or you could give them access to see the agent details dashboard and then see their own data so they could keep an eye on their own statistics, um, shift to shift or interval to interval. And the, the really good thing about uh, CX Insights is just like our reports that we have in um, Interaction Reporter, all of the dashboards can be, um, can be granted to, well, agents can have access to the dashboards granted to them via Interaction Administrator, just like reports. So if you go into Interaction Administrator under security, you'll see the list of dashboards there and you can select it however many you want for a supervisor or agent. So again, you have some level of granularity there. That's cool. So um, going back to, yeah, view mm -hmm. like this. So how often does this view update? Is it just every time you refresh the page or? No, you, you might see um, you get a little spinner there every, I think it's 15 seconds. Um, I mean, it's a real time data stream being going from the server to our service that handles it. But the dashboard itself um, has a, a refresh, uh, automated refresh, and it's, it's hard coded right now to 15 seconds. So you'll see that updating. Um, and for the GA release uh, mid-year, we're actually making some changes to that. So A, there won't be a refresh spinner, and B, you won't even notice a flash or anything. It's just going to, um, the, the charts will just update without, without notice. And, um, you know, we're probably going to lower that threshold down to five seconds. So it's, you know, you can call it near real time. Gotcha. But still, you know, within five seconds for most of this data, I think is pretty reasonable. Oh yeah, for sure. And, yeah. um, going back to the, uh, graph you pointed out where you could see connected and waiting. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. that one, uh, uh, you mentioned like, yeah, this is a great way to be proactive. Um, what about, are there any kind of automated messages that could come out of this? Like if, uh, like an automated message to where if the waiting bar surpasses connected, um, some kind of a message can go out or something like that. So like alerting, if yeah. you're talking about alerting. And again, that's another feature that we have planned for the future as well. Um, awesome. if not in this release, you know, you'll be able to have alerts um, and you'll be able to color code things. Like if, if you didn't like the number of agents logged in, Maybe you want it to be red. You know, you'll have that control, and so we'll be we'll be we'll be updating uh, some of our dashboards to do that as well. Well, that this is all really cool stuff. Um, anything else you want to share as part of the demo? Well, let me just show uh, one more work group. That's I'm sorry, one more dashboard that is specific to multiple work groups. So multiple work group overview. If Let's say that you're a supervisor and you're responsible for multiple work groups and you want to get an idea of what the performance is of each work group at any given time. And you can see here I have all of these selected, but if I want to look at, um, let's say I just want to look at billing and claims. Now I've got two work groups side by side and I've got the, the availability here logged in, available, available for interactions. So for instance, right now, um, the claims group doesn't have any available, but billing has six. So you might want to move people over. Again, another way that this gives you the insight to make the, good, the better decision or the best decision to run your, your work group and your business. Um, and again, it gives you, you know, however many work groups you, you are responsible for. And the list of work groups that shows up here will be based on what you have access to in the system that's grant, been granted to you by an administrator. Um, you know, with the holiday season, people are always looking for a brand new toy. So when can people start uh, playing around with this, Greg? 
So the good thing is for premise customers, it's available now. Um, and uh, there's a couple of caveats for premise deployment right now that I'll talk about in a second. But for our Peer, Peer Connect cloud customers, um, we are still working on some details of deploying uh, to the Peer Connect cloud uh, infrastructure. So I'm working with a couple of select customers to, to build that out for them. Um, but we do expect general availability um, before, the, uh, before middle of next year for Peer Connect cloud customers as well. For Peer Connect Prem customers, um, it requires a new server that you have to think of it like a media server. You know, you've got an extra piece of hardware that's doing some high computing. Um, you don't want to run this directly on your CIC server. You know, so there is some uh, infrastructure cost there, but we've um, we've made it um, containerized via Docker containers, and all you need to do is is deploy a Linux server running CentOS and running Docker, and then we have scripts that deploy all of our, our systems and services that are needed. And we have um, installation document for that. It's online right now. It's, it's on our help.genesis.com. Uh, and maybe we can throw a link to that up at some yeah. point. Um, but we have that if you want to start looking at it. So again, just, just contact your, your account rep and uh, you guys can get started using it. Great. And then for those uh Pure Connect Cloud customers, if they connect, if they um, get in touch with their rep, that's how they can also join, for lack of a better word. Are we calling this a beta of, uh, of Insights? Well, early adopter, but um, I've, I've already got the customers um, that okay. we're going to work with for, for this initial early adopter. Uh, but again, depending on how things go, the first quarter, it may be available uh, like in March or April. Uh, okay. But there'll be more information on that as time goes on. Just... Uh, I still do got a lot of requests for information, and I've been doing a lot of demos, uh, just remote demos, kind of like what we're doing right now. Um, so there is a lot of interest in it, but I know people have been waiting for this for a long time, so we're excited to have this rolled out. Absolutely. Well, thank you for uh, including us as uh, as part of your uh, your demo audience. I know um, some people will be really excited about this, so it's great. Yeah, exciting. you're welcome. Thanks for the opportunity, Matt. I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. I know another thing that you wanted to talk about, because we do get questions about it a fair amount, is um, our plans for transitioning people from Marquee. Um, I figured you'd be a good person to ask that about. So maybe you can just uh, tell us a little bit from your perspective. What, is that, what does that look like? Yeah, so that's a good question. Thank you for asking that, because you're right. It is on a lot of people's minds. Uh, some people have had Marquee for years. And in recent interviews that I've done with some customers, some customers aren't even using it anymore because it's become too complicated or too hard to update or maintain. Some people use it, but they use it minimally. Um, so the plan for a marquee replacement is actually CX Insights. Um, with what we have today, um, it's not quite there yet, so we're not quite saying that we can replace marquee today, but we're working towards that. In fact, I'm working with a couple of customers on looking at the marquee dashboards and views that they have and working with my development team um, to kind of build those out and see um, what what it would take to build a typical existing marquee view in CX Insights so that when we do get there, um, you know, by the way, it is coming mid-year next year uh, or when we will be able to have, you know, custom dashboards, you know, built by, you know, our own end users, our customers, maybe even a supervisor. So it's, it's going to be the CX Insights in designer mode. And then we're going to have a set of, you know, best practices and some good examples of, how you would you know, recreate one of your marquee dashboards in CX Insights. Um, you know, we're not gonna be able to release out of the box all of the different dashboards that all of our customers have made with marquee. That's just not possible or practical. So what we wanna do is we wanna empower our customers with the tools to be able to do it easier. Um, and so that's why I'm working closely with a, a set of customers to make sure that we are able to deliver that so that they'll do it. Awesome. So while all of this is launching, um, just if anybody has any questions about, you know, the transition from Marquee or CX Insights, what's the best way to to trans to um to ask those? Well, you can email the product management uh, Pure Connect group at genesis.com um, or contact, you know, your your technical account manager or your account executive. They, you know, I get a lot of requests and emails from those types of folks, so. They can they can they can do that and we'll get them the answers. Okay, awesome. And then um, you know along those lines, another question I'm sure some customers will have is, can you use third party data in the dashboards that um, that are coming out? Yeah, we we have uh, a plan for that as well. 
So the plan is to release the designer capability, the ability to build your own custom dashboards using the PeerConnect real-time data stream and PeerConnect historical data. Now we're gonna try to release the third-party data feature at the same time so it all goes out together, but if not, it'll follow shortly so that you'd be able to build a single dashboard that might show some agent statistics with some other business data, maybe about the agent or maybe past um, interactions or maybe some sales data that you have in, in some sales database. Um, you'd be able to combine those together, historical and real time together. So that will be either at the same time as the designer capabilities or shortly thereafter. Okay, awesome. Um, well, let's see here. Uh, Greg, I don't think I have anything else. Anything else you wanna share with, um, with our viewers before we sign off? No, I just, I appreciate your interest in, in reporting and analytics and uh, I know it's been a little bit of a long road, but uh, stay with us on it. Uh, we're getting there. So we thank you for your, your time and your patience. Awesome. Well, Greg, thanks for stopping by the show. We really appreciate it. And um, as CX Insights launches and maybe some questions come into the community, we cannot wait to have you back to help us answer them. Hey, I can't wait to be back. <laughs> awesome. All right, my friend, have a good one and we'll catch you on the next time. Thanks very much. Take care. Thanks for tuning in for this week's episode. We hope it was helpful and maybe a little bit entertaining. Each week, our hosts and experts review community discussions and debate what content to discuss so your voice matters. Do we miss something? Do you have a question for the show? Let us know. Join the conversation at the Genesis online community. As a Genesis customer or partner, you can create an account. Just click the sign-in button found on most pages and follow the necessary instructions to create an account. Also, feel free to email us at qashow at genesis.com. We'd love to hear from you. If this is your first episode, welcome. You can view our entire archives. Go to the helpful links panel found on most community pages and find the QA show archive that interests you. We appreciate your support of the show and the community. Cheers.